I just wanted to go through a couple passages with you to remind you one of the most special parts of prayer, right before we go to prayer. Here in Psalms chapter 5, verse 11, but let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. And you know, throughout Psalms, the psalmists often will refer to the Lord as our hiding place, or our fortress, or our strong tower, or our refuge. And that, what a great picture, illustration that is, isn't it? When we're in trouble, no matter what the attack is, whether it's an attack of your emotions, an attack of your mind, whether it's a, a physical, actual physical danger like a a tragedy or a storm or something of that sort, no matter what the need is, whether it's spiritual, emotional, psychological, even physical, you know, that's one thing that I like about the Psalms when it talks about the Lord being our refuge and our hiding place. You've got to remember, a lot of times David was writing those Psalms while he was being chased for his life. And so he was taking this literal that God was his protection. And do you know that every day that we go out into the world, as you seek Father and abide in His presence, His presence will be your protection. And that protection will be for whatever you need it to be, whether it's spiritual or whether it's natural. Watch what he says. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. Such joy in God's presence. In His presence is fullness of joy. We don't have to walk around you know, all gloomy and down in the face and down in the mouth and a frown on our face. And uh, you can walk around so happy, people will wonder what's wrong with you. Let them ever sing for joy. Uh, in a world where there's so little that brings us joy, except our relationships with each other and family, in this world where there is so much doom and gloom and sin and evil and violence and everything else going on, you can be singing for joy as you go through every day, as you're in his presence. Now watch this next phrase. I really like this next phrase. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may exalt in you. Spread your protection. As you're abiding in his presence throughout the day, his protection is covering you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover him with favor as with a sword. And you know how they really depended on their swords back then. The, the shield and the buckler, the buckler especially was four to five feet in length, and it was made to cover uh, the entire body. And we've all seen those movies like Braveheart or maybe not Braveheart, but some of the other movies where, you know, they shoot all those arrows up in the air and the soldiers hold the, the shield up and protects them from everything coming down on their heads. Or maybe they're attacking, what was that Braveheart? Okay, is that a movie? I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't see that one. Oh, okay. Or, you know, when they're, when they're fighting a fort, and trying to invade a fort or take a fort, and they start throwing all those rocks down on them, and they hold the shield up. Just as that imagery is in your mind, look at verse 12. You cover him with favor as with a shield, you know? Sometimes I have to re remind myself of that because uh, Paul Jr. and I were talking last night, and we, somehow our conversation got off on, you know, it, through the process of the day, through a conversation or something that may happen at work, sometimes you feel the need to prove that you're right, you know. And uh, it's so funny because we were just talking about that last night. And this morning, when I went into work, uh, where I work in, these, in this conference center, we have cabinets that have to be locked at all times. And so one of the, a couple weeks ago, one of the locks on the cabinet broke. So knowing that it had to be locked up overnight, I ran to the store and got a padlock and just secured it overnight. And then went to security the next day and said, hey, this lock broke, but it's okay for the night. You know, I'll replace it tomorrow. And they said, oh, it's okay. You don't have to replace it. Just keep the padlock on it. So I said, okay. You know, that's easy enough to do. So I get an email today saying, 
uh, why haven't you replaced the lock yet? And I'm thinking, because you told me not to. You know, and it was so tempting, and I did go and say something to them. But the whole time, this conversation with Paul last night is ringing in my ear, you don't have to prove you're right. You don't have to prove you're right. And so I did go with a good attitude, but, you know, it's, uh, it can be frustrating at times working out there, right? And sometimes you can get a hold of some real cantankerous people that uh, love to make life hard on you. But in situations like that, I like to think of verses like verse 12 when it says, you cover them with favor. You know, and I've had to remind myself of that, and I've seen God do this again and again and again. When you have God's favor, the world can't touch you. They can't fire you. They can't lay you off. They can't blackball you. They can't. He covers us with favor as with the shield. And I really don't have to try to prove I'm right. I can resist that temptation because I know his favor is all about me. And no matter what, the devil can't penetrate that shield of the favor of God. Now think of that. You have God's favor. He looks down upon you and he loves you. And he bestows his grace upon you. You are his chosen child. And he's there every minute of the day surrounding you, loving you, taking care of you, protecting you. He's protecting you from more than you can even conceive of because we don't have those type of eyes to see into the invisible realm yet. Psalms 27, verse 3. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise against me, yet I will be confident. Can you imagine waking up in the morning and having a thousand troops parked on your front door or in your front yard? Now, most of our front yards wouldn't hold a thousand troops, but can you imagine a thousand soldiers lined up in battle array, lined up against your house? He says, though an army encamp against me, my heart shall what? Shall not fear. We really can go through this life without a care, without any fear, without any worry. Even if an army is encamped against me, I'll be confident. Why? Because one thing have I asked of the Lord, and that's what I'm seeking after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. One thing have I asked of the Lord. One thing. Does one thing sound like too little? I mean, don't... Don't you have like two or three or four things you'd like to ask of the Lord? But you know, the reality of it, and I think that's why it's phrased this way, one thing have I asked of the Lord. Once you've been in his presence and gazed upon his beauty, he is so satisfying that all the other desires just kind of melt away. He, I mean, he becomes all that you want, all that you need, all that you desire, and his presence is so satisfying that items number two, three, and four just kind of disappear. He's just so perfect and so fulfilling and so wonderful. Now watch what he goes on to say here in verse 5. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And when those floodwaters come, I remember one time I was, uh, I was hiking on a trail off of 193, and there's a, there's a stream that comes down through there, uh, and it catches all of the overflow. All of, uh, overflow is not the right word. What am I going to say? It catches all of the rainwater that comes off of Tyson's Corner parking lot, all, all of the malls there. They have it root, routed in such a way that it all comes down this one channel. So there had been a big rain, but the rain had stopped. And so I'm walking down this trail, just about to cross this, this creek bed. And suddenly I hear this, it sounded like a, a jet airplane coming in low. It was this rumble. And I thought, what in the world? You know, there wasn't any airplanes overhead. There weren't any, I mean, I was too far away from any cars or trucks or anything like that. 
Next thing I know, this great big wall of water just come, it, it was a flash flood, just comes racing down through this little creek bed. Uh, and there were some other people there. Unfortunately, they got their little children away in time. But uh, if you had been anywhere near then, near the, the creek bed, you would have just been swept away. And I think of that flash flood coming in verses where he says, he will lift me high upon a rock. You won't be swept away. You'll be safe. And when the torrents of this life and this world come racing towards you to destroy you and to try to overwhelm you and drown you, he's got you safe up on the rock. A firm foundation. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will hide me in his shelter. Who does this happen to? The people in verse 4 who simply love to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord. And his presence then surrounds you as you're seeking his face. And his presence becomes that mighty fortress that no enemy can penetrate. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. Joy is, joy is one of the common denominators of his presence. When you're in his presence, there's joy. You're happy, you're content, you're satisfied. If you're miserable, discouraged, depressed, discontent, you haven't been in his presence enough. I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. We all know Psalms 91, right? He that dwells in the shelter of the Most High, abiding in God. This, this is a theme that reoccurs again and again throughout the book of Psalms and Isaiah. And he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, what? My refuge. When you're in trouble during the day, run to God. Run to his presence. Let him wrap his arms around you. He's a refuge. He's a mighty fortress that no enemy can penetrate. My refuge and my fortress. When you're having trouble with that coworker at work, instead of taking up for yourself and fighting, go to prayer. Find a, a little niche somewhere in the office and just go to prayer. Seek God. Crawl into his presence. When something's wrong at home, go to God in prayer. When you're depressed and discouraged, go to God in prayer. When you're being tempted, go to God in prayer. He will be that sure foundation and a refuge and a fortress for you. He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. The snare of the fowler there is, is referring to a trap. And it's referring to the, the type of trap they would use to catch fowl or birds. And, uh, you know, it was usually kind of spring-loaded, not with the springs we think of today, but maybe with a branch of a tree or something like that and a little piece of twine or rope. And, you know, and, and all of a sudden, the fowl would be surprised and it would grab it around the feet, grab it around the neck, and he would be ensnared. And so when he says he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler, it's saying he will deliver you from those satanic attacks that you don't even know are there. Then he goes on and he says he will deliver you from what? The deadly pestilence. And the deadly pestilence is it's talking more in, in terms of like the, uh, the frogs or the locusts, you know, in the plagues, where it, just, it was just this overwhelming swarm and it just took you by storm. So he's saying he's going to deliver you from the traps, those things that you don't even know are there. He's also going to deliver you from that pestilence that just wants to overtake you and overwhelm you. He will cover you with his pinions. Does anybody know what pinions is? Feathers. It's the long feathers. I had to look it up. It's the long feathers, long tail feathers, the long wing feathers. So it, it, what he's saying there, it's the feathers that will provide you the most cover. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. There it is again, the picture, the imagery of you're now behind this protection and nothing can penetrate. 
You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. So if you're sitting there tonight and you look at the seat right next to you, it can come that close to you, but it can't touch you. It can be all around you, but it won't touch you. Isn't that a wonderful promise? Who is this for? This is for those who make him their refuge, that seek his presence. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent. And this promise is sure to those that seek him with the whole heart, that make him, his presence, their refuge, their hiding place. And then last, Isaiah 40, verse 29. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Is that you tonight? The faint? No might? Even in times when young people shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted, you know, don't you look at young people? How many, how many times have you looked at a young person and said, man, I wish I had that energy? Well, he's saying here in verse 30, even when they faint and falter, they who wait on the Lord shall what? Renew their strength. So you might wear that 15-year-old out, but the 70-year-old who's waiting on the Lord is going to get stronger and stronger. That's what he's saying. That's exactly what he means here. They who wait for the Lord shall do what? Renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. And there's the secret right there. It's not your strength. But you're riding upon the Spirit of God. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So as we go to prayer tonight, I just really wanted to put that image in your mind that as you seek Father and as you look upon His face tonight, you're entering in to the stronghold, the fortress, the mighty tower of your God. And when you go there, remember these scriptures, no enemy can penetrate. Sin can't get to you, discouragement can't get to you, the devil can't get to you, condemnation can't get to you. You're safe in the arms of your Father. 